Welcome to the Energy for Life podcast, where we explore the future of health and wellness to help you enhance your energy, health, and purpose. I'm your host, Harry Massey, a pioneer in bioenergetics who's dedicated to looking beyond biochemistry to explore the innate healing power of the human body. Some of our episodes are also hosted by Nikki Gratrix, an award-winning functional medicine practitioner and a bioenergetic coach. We've both made it our mission to look beyond conventional medicine and mainstream science to help you get well and stay well. So enjoy the show. Well, welcome to the Energy for Life podcast. Now, today is a, they're always special episodes, so, but it's an extra, extra special episode because today we're actually joined with our sort of our dual host, which is Nikki, because Nikki runs uh, some of the podcasts. And um, Nikki has basically written a paper, a white paper about infoceuticals, which I believe is going on the infoceuticals.com website. Uh, but we thought we would take the chances it's such a good paper to basically just have a general discussion and talk about everything in pharmaceuticals. So, um, you know, a lot of the science behind it, um, a lot of other people's science out of Europe and Russia and the States and uh, just have a, a general, a general discussion. So, you know, I say welcome Nikki to the podcast, but it's also your podcast. But <laughs> hi Nikki. Thank you so much, Harry. Yeah, this should be really cool topic, really interesting, um, expanding science in this area all the time. So I think um, people should be super interested and we're going to talk about, well actually probably we'll do two podcasts on this because we've got a part one and a part two I think we're going to do and we'll focus, we're going to focus a little bit more on water in this one. Absolutely, yeah. And the, um, the second one, well the second one is also super interesting because we're looking into how, how you can actually make in how you actually make in pharmaceuticals, aren't we? That, that was your topic. Yes, yeah, so that'll be part two where we talk about something called resonance matching and things like this. And, but that's for later. Um, that'll be that's part two. Later. But let's just talk about, yeah, let's just talk about water first because that's an emerging area of science where there's so much more to water than we thought, right? Absolutely. Well, we, we could start with the, I guess, the, the first one. I think, um, I, I, think, I think originally you wrote in this paper, I remember it's that it was 80% of our bodies were water. And I was like, no, it's not. It's it's ninety nine percent because even you know well, and it gets really interesting. But if you like looking at even your proteins, well, proteins are made basically made of hydrogen, oxygen, and a few carbons. Um, same with fat. Then everything in between, uh, obviously, more more water molecules and basic. And I think if you count, yeah, if you count up the actual amount of molecules of h2o it's, it's absolutely more than 99 percent. but if you do it by weight i think it's it's less than 99 percent. but um yeah let's just start with pretty much the body is water even though we don't think it is exactly that so it's a really good point that people don't realize like 99 percent by molecular by molecule is and 70 percent by weight i mean that so we kind of need to know about like we're bathed in all these water molecules that there might be more to it in terms of how it's impacting our biochemistry. Um, so yeah, it's so ubiqu- ubiquitous in the body that we need to understand more about how water works because there, there are properties and anomalous properties of water that are going to direct, that are going to directly affect us, our cells, right? Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. And well, maybe it's worth talking about the, I guess the different forms of water in the body because you have, you know, well, we're probably all used to thinking the idea of bl- of blood of water you know water flow well basically that blood is mostly water but say it's blood it's fats it's proteins it's um like in inside the cell we have structured water which we're going to get into in a minute um any other forms of water in the body no i think you've i think that's pretty much covered it and i think i think the key distinction is understanding about about this thing called structured water and we we need to talk about the the brilliant contribution of professor gerald polak right because it's the basis of understanding the start point of how we start understanding how ultimately in pharmaceuticals work right absolutely absolutely um should we go straight there or or do we i don't know one of the things at the beginning of your paper was that um there's 72 anomalous properties of water um do, do you do you remember any of those amazing 72 not that we're going through all 72 
so, I can remember some of them if you if you can't. Uh, one of them, one of them is the fact that um, basically it, most substances in their crystal solid form have a um, have a greater density than than in their liquid form, and that's not true with water, right? So I, I guess that explains why ice floats, and that's an anomalous property of water, right? Yeah, yeah. That's okay. one. The that's other, the other one is a. Yeah, the other one, massive one, is the surface tension of water is, I think it's only mercury that has a higher surface tension. So that's why you see these little tiny insects that skate along the top of a, a pond, and that's the surface tension. And that, again, is very anomalous for water. It's really powerful. So already it's sort of demonstrating that it I've, holds I've, I've pulled, properties. I pulled, I pulled up the, uh, the list of 72 here. Not that I'm going to read them out, but basically there's... <laughs> Water phase anomalies, which is what you were talking about, how basically it's melting point, boiling point, um, etc., um, doesn't follow the sort of norm, the normal rules. Yeah, then you have the the temperature gradation doesn't follow the normal rules. Um, density doesn't follow the normal rules. Um, there's 22 anomalies in water density, but I won't bore everyone with those. Um, then there's water material uh, anom anomalies. Uh, to do with yeah which basically means there's anomalies in electrical conductivity um which actually we can talk about when we're looking at pollock's work because that has a lot of relevance um there then there's also thermodynamic anomalies um like you have the specific heat capacity is unusually high etc um and then you have physical anomalies anyway which is the all the surface tension stuff you were talking about yeah, so, so that's kind of interesting is that here we have this thing that we are mostly made up of. It's got all these anomalous pro um, properties and we don't really understand how water works. And like there's, there's only some of the leading scientists specializing in the area that have started to kind of break down. Okay, so all those anomalies, what are the implications of that? So if we just dig in, into the, some of the work of Professor Gerald Polak for a second. So he's, it's worth knowing he's a professor of bioengineering at the University of Washington. And he, he originally was writing papers published in like science and nature, right? So he was literally a world-class scientist. I mean, those two papers are the top leading papers in the world. And he, he wrote, he's written books called like the cells, gels and the, en um, and the engines of life, a new unifying approach to cell function. And then later science, nature, cell immuno uh, immunology and others. And in that, it's worth saying that in that book, the, the, the message in the book was so deeply substantiated and convincing that some reviewers of the book characterized it as a 305 page, page reference to the future of cell biology, which is pretty crazy. So we, we need to talk about, he, he basically, Polak is saying he, he discovered what we call, what we call a fourth phase of water. So most people will just cover briefly like the phases of water. So there's, there's, basically um, gas, liquid, and solid. And in water, that's obviously vapor. That's, and then liquid water that we all drink, is, that's also known as bulk water. And vapor is steam, right? So that's easy enough for everybody to know. You've all got direct experience with those things. So what's this fourth phase? That's what's called structured water. It's also a type of, like, it's been known as a type of gel-like cr crystalline substance. It's also been called easy water and hexagonal water you'll see all these different names quite a few different names out there for isn't it yeah h2o3 is another one yeah and that now it turns out that that type of water has some very special properties and it's what most of our body is made up of this kind of gel like structure and it turns out and we'll cover this like not only does that type of water potentially power our bodies but it also is a medium of providing information and direction to the biology and, and our bodies as well. And that's uh, just to put this into context, like it's a huge mind chain, uh, a, a, a massive worldview shift to think of when we talk about what energizes the well, body. It's also, it's also mechanical as well, isn't it? I mean, yes. it, it, I, mean it's, I mean, it's basically this medium where en energy can go in and because there's information, a bit like, I guess, a bit like computer memory that's re recorded, 
in the structured water. When energy goes in, it's able to actually start directing water molecules in certain directions, which I think, I don't know if it was in this paper, but it was that sort of partly that thing that we, we came across or whoever it was, Todd or someone came across it the, the other day, but um, you know, genes are basically sitting inside structured water and the things that split um, you know, genes apart are actually, well, again, are actually water molecules. And then there's, I, I, know, I know you found this other research that showed how water molecules can basically just nudge, nudge, the, nudge the genetic protein molecules. Um, and then, you know, you have to ask, well, why or how are they doing that? You know, you need a source of energy um, and you need information. I mean, you know, if you don't have, if you don't have direction or information, you don't have energy, you know, not, nothing can happen. But yeah, it's such a foreign concept to think that a phase of water can be this sort of, well, I mean, basically it's life, isn't it? It has a, it's, well, it's basically alive. Well, the amazing thing is, I mean, most people think, if you ask most people, you know, what fuels your body? Where are you getting your energy from? People are still very much in the biochemical food paradigm. Well, it's my protein, fats and carbs. I'm fueled. Okay, I breathe. I drink water. So that's, it's there. But most people think of mitochondrial function. You know, you produce ATP, which is the, you know, the energy currency of the cell. And that it's food, our proteins that give us energy. And it's, it's a weird shift in in ideas and perspective to go actually the water in your body and the special type of water structured water not just liquid water normal water is actually not only is it powering what's happening in the biology but it's also structured water and we'll talk more about this can uh, store information that will direct how dna might express and how uh, certain pro what proteins are produced by the DNA that the water can change the way the DNA expresses the shape of the DNA and it can, the water is actually impacting the shape of proteins and we know that when you change the shape of proteins you change function so the idea about powering powering the body this it's a useful uh, there's an analogy that um, Dr. Uh, Professor Polak uses and I always talk about it. So just when you think about uh, it, a straw and you, you see the water going up the straw and it's going up above your, the drink. So it's the, you know, when you see water rising in a straw, another question is how, what's powering that and what powers sap in a tree? So how does the sap in a stem of a plant or a tree move up that tree and get to the periphery, you know, branches and the leaves. So the, what powers that it turns out is phase four water, structured water. It's, it's even weirder, isn't it, in the, in the body, because um, there's capillaries inside, you know, well, say take my arm, you know, there's capillaries inside the muscle in my arm that are narrower than the red blood cells. And yet the red blood cells are able to, to get around and basi basically without an additional source of power, which is basically coming from the structured water around, around the edges of the red blood cells, yeah, well, you, would, you wouldn't even be able to get oxygen in, in, into all of your finer tissue. So that's a really good point. In other words, the heart, we think the, that the blood circulation is entirely dependent on the power of the heart. And that's not true. At the, as you say, at the capillary level, what is powering those red blood cells through, and obviously that improves oxygenation of the body, is the same thing that powers the water to rise up a straw and sap in a tree. And that's structured water. And we, we just should talk about structured water is where is two, there's two things that happens when water gets structured by it's it's hydrophilic surfaces so water loving surfaces like cell membranes will cause a split um, a charge separation in the hydrogen molecules and the oxygen molecules so that you've got positives a pluses and minuses and as soon as you get cells a uh, charge separation and this is where we're getting some physics here that charge separation creates a uh, it's like a battery you're creating a power cell so the separation is therefore would you say it's like potential energy right i'm on track with that right you're creating yeah, this charge good. separation is creating potential energy which actually, when you've got that charge separation, that's creating power, flow, and movement. And so that's one property is it's literally like um, structured water. You, could, you should be able to power a light bulb with it because of the charge separation. It only takes place next to, next to 
hydro, um, hydrophilic surfaces, which like cell membranes, water loving cell membranes, that's what causes the charge separation. And it's called easy, the exclusion zone, that's another name for, uh, for uh, structured water, because it excludes all solutes. And it's that it's rather, Which is rather good for, top, well, the opposite of toxicity. And, you know, I mean, the whole, obviously a, mass, a massive, um, I guess, well, thing in, I guess, holistic health is, de is detoxing. But, you know, ultimately, if you've got good structured water inside your cell, as you say, it basically naturally pushes out the solutes, naturally push, pushes out toxins. And uh, yeah, if you're actually like dehydrated, don't have so much structured water, and you know you end up with all of these toxins in there, and um, they're not they're not so easily able to get out. Exactly. So it's it's very interesting. I think it's also the first stage of photosynthesis. Are saying this charge separation. Now, there's, there's two things that's happening with that. One is we, we have this potential energy to drive biological processes, including flow through the capillaries and the blood. So as soon as you do things, we need to talk about like share, so let's share some ways that we increase structured water in our bodies, but that because that's a fun bit as well when we talk about what, what causes water to structure. But, but also, and this is a key thing we'll come back to, when this water is in its structured form, this easy water, this um, hexagonal water, whatever you want to call it, it's in a cohe the molecules line up in a coherent state. It's a bit like laser light. I just use laser light as an example because it's people can visualize it. So with laser light, all the photons of light are in a wave formation and they match peak to peak and trough to trough. So it's just coherent. It's everything's lined up. There's structure. It's not just chaos. And that's very important. We'll come back to it more later, but with water, all those little molecules, if they're rushing around at the speed of femtoseconds, which is a quadrillionth of a second, all over the place, chaotic, that's hardly going to be a storage device, right? But when water becomes structured, guess what? Like a, a silicon chip, all the lining up of all the molecules suddenly means it looks a little bit more like a silicon chip. Wait a minute, maybe, maybe that's how water can have memory. We'll talk about more of that later. But Harry, maybe share some ways. What's the what the what's the key? Well, way? Should, I'm, I'm going to share. I, I'm oh, yeah. Gonna, I'm, <laughs> yeah, go go for I'm, it. I'm going to say something that was going to surprise you. Okay. Um, okay. Here we go. The Nikki surprise. Um, well, actually, actually, the best way is structured water. Honestly, is just drinking it because um, your <laughs> and your your body is basically an ultimate structuring machine um, because you know you you drink it as you drink bubbles get formed as it goes in you know into you when it you're getting water into your in, into your bloodstream all of your veins are slightly spiraled so i'm basically sort of um toying at the, at the idea but basically the things that we use outside the body to structure water um like vortexes vortexes happen in inside the body um you know streams and bubbles happen inside the body um Obviously, light, light. Obviously, you know, we we basically go out, go outside, and you know, like um. No, but that's that's a really big thing. That's a massive point that we just want to expand on. So, lo and behold, what's this? Why is this is so important? I will expand on what you just said. It's really important. But why is why is that so important? Oh, it turns out that ultra uh, um, infrared is the biggest. If you shine infrared light at water, it will create, it will start turning it into structured water. Now, why that's phenomenal is because infrared light is part of sunlight is everywhere. Well, so it's, part, it's part of your, my, you know, mitochondria producing infrared as well, right inside your, but, but right that's, inside your cells. That's free energy, dudes. We're talking about free energy. So what we're saying is that I can go out in the sunlight. This is just another reason about why sunlight is incredibly important for health. I go out in the sun and it actually, the rays are passing into my body. We're 99% water and our bodies are getting structured water when we're exposed to that light, which includes sauna because sauna therapy is infrared light. It's another example of a way of how you can increase structured water. So now we're starting to maybe learn about why sunlight and, in, and, in, uh, and saunas can make us feel so good. Um, but it's also free, so it's free energy. So we are literally sunlight powered batteries we're not just what we eat we are powered by sunlight coming into the body and structuring our water which creates the cell that the, those yeah, molecules know, separation. That, to, basically uh, helping helping your body to structure water to me is far well far more important than 
trying to structure water or buy structured water and you know there's a gazillion structured waters you know pro, pro, products on the net or structuring machines um but I'll, I'll be honest i think you know what what matters more is just drinking as pure a water as you can so you know just having really really good filters or from i don't know from the the, the perrier mountain top or you know the spring the spring of where, of, of where the water comes from um because ultimately as to say you can well the the, the body's going to structure it anyway and um, well, I mean, for instance, and I think, I, I don't know if we'll get into this, but, you know, if we're looking at some of the polar experiments, if you're shining, you know, you're shining the infrared light in and it basically builds up this EZ layer, you take the light away, the EZ layer goes down, meaning like, you know, you could do all this amazing structuring and people can sell you structured water, um, but the structure at that point, you know, when they structured it, does not mean that it's travelled around, it, God knows, been on a supermarket shelf, whatever got to you. Um, the same level of structure won't be there by the time you drink it anyway. So, um, yeah, you're sort of wasting your money. Yeah, yeah the only exception to that I'd possibly say, and this is something that Polax talked about as a source of structured water. So fresh What's vegetable the source, juices. What's the saying? What's the source? It's the source that matters more. And it's the it's basically the mi the minerals that's in that's in the water that matters more because but basically uh, I use that very fancy word hydro um, hydrophilic hydrophilic yeah. hydrophilic <laughs> um, basically structured water likes hydrophilic surfaces um, so all all minerals are hydrophilic surfaces so basically highly mineralized water you know builds up a lot of structure around it and into your next point about juicing. Um, Obviously, raw vegetable juices have you know huge, huge amounts of min minerals and other things suspended in them, so you get all the structure around that too. Yeah, so that's a great source: vegetable juicing, fresh vegetables, and uh, organic. Ideally, that's another great source. Polak mentions coconut water, which is quite an interesting. Oh, and it one. says turmeric too. That's interesting. Yeah, I'd be I'd be mixing. Uh, I had a drink of um, turmeric powder mixed with neem powder this morning. Yeah, pretty disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like a turmeric bone broth would be awesome. So adding some turmeric to some heated bone broth during the winter times, like as a type of soup, great, amazing. That's a supercharged uh, um, kind of drink to have. I think um, I think oh the only other one that's worth mentioning because Polak mentions it as well is being connected to the earth, right, and earthing. So maybe you can expand on how that works. Oh. Okay. <laughs> oh, I just dropped you in it. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. It's fine. Um, well, I'll take it a little further. So, um, yeah, grounding's, grounding's such an interesting one. So, personally, I don't notice too much from just, you know, walking around um, barefoot on the grass. Um, but one thing, one place I find it's like, ama it works amazingly well. If, if you're near the sea, um, basically swimming, swimming in, in the ocean, that really, really does ground you um, because, you know, lo and behold, sea, the seawater is a little bit like a, you know, a giant, well, a bit, a bit like a giant water battery in itself. Um, you know, it's, it's not, it's, and because all the seawater obviously is completely covering you, that's, that, that really is grounding you to um, the same, uh, the same electrical potential as the earth's surface pretty, you know, pretty much instantaneously and i'm um, sorry to connect yeah to connect it back to connect it back to structured water um because in structured water well ba basically you know, have you have the cell and inside the basically inside the cell membrane um you end up with the structured water and then the bulk water on the very very inside um but as soon as you're connecting as soon as you're connecting to negative ions through grounding um we're basically a uh, those electrons are basically able to travel from the earth or in the example i gave from the sea um and yeah they're basically able to end up uh well sorry within the charge separation between bulk water and um structured water inside the cell i mean lo long and short it's more easily able to charge you know what what we call your body battery yeah that's i, I really fi find that as so well even walking on a beach where your feet are actually in the wet part of the sand as well i think that I've noticed more from spending, you know, 30 to 60 yeah, minutes. I, yeah, I'm walking on the wet ground. I think that, yeah, that's the way. But yeah, I'm not sure just about general, general dry feet. But that, yeah, so because water conducts 
electricity better, right? Yeah. So that's that's yeah. that's why. But so we've just we've covered some, so here's that's some practical information. So so that people know just we've talked about structured water being uh, you're, you're going to, so it, when you get lots of structured water in your body, you've got better circulation, all your cells are better oxygenated, you're going to feel lighter, more energized. It's just a, it's a big energy boost. And so we've shared all those ways that practically, so we've got some practical things people can do right away to improve their health from what we've been talking about. I think we should. I think we should get into the the main memory. subject of memory of water and in, and in pharmaceuticals. Yeah, because it it it's important to understand about structured water just so that you know it's that this fourth phase, the structure is what enables that I mentioned. Like the structure means that it can now store information. Uh, it can store. Yeah, it's a bit. It's a bit like um, you know, it's a maybe it's a bit old school, but like mag magnetic. You know, just magnetic tape. Um, you know, stru structured water basically is a bit like magnetic tape in the fact that it's able to store information um, versus, yeah, bulk. I mean, the reason bulk water doesn't work is because the molecules are basically, well, it's Brownian motion. And they're just flying around all over the place. And there's no way you can have, you know, regular coherent information and stuff that's doing like that. You need, it, need, it needs to have structure so that you can... Um, we're not allowed to use the word resonance, but basically, so we can, um, you know, use 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 resonance to get to get coherent information into it. But a lot of that will be in part two. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, we'll talk. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about how how we. Well, the the bit that's going to we can we can sh we what we're going to do in today's podcast is we're just talking about water itself how structured water is the basis for, for water memory. And let's start talking more about the, some of the history around water memory, some of the controversy around that. Let's, get, let's go to Russia. What do you reckon? Okay. <laughs> I was right. going to just quote, I'll just do, I was going to do one quote from the paper, just from Polak, when he says, when we first started working with water, the idea of information and water seemed weird and strange and maybe possible. But now with each passing year and seeing clear experimental evidence that it can exist, it's changed my view a lot. So Polak is like, oh yeah, all these things about homeopathy and can water contain memory? He's on board with that now, the, the world's leading expert on water. So, um, and it's the Russians, as you men mentioned, this is probably one of the reasons why people don't know about the science so well, is that it's like thousands of science studies on the memory of water that, that, that they're being conducted in Russia. So we don't tend to, that doesn't sort of hit mainstream PubMed papers, but you have to kind of read the books and be interested in the specific area. But there's tons, there's a long history in Russia as well, going back before some of, I mean, are we going to talk about Ben Vinista? Um, should we talk about him? We talked about him a lot. I've, but... I've definitely talked about him a lot on the podcast. Let, yeah, let's talk about some of the, the other ones that we definitely have mentioned. I mean, I, I think his name was Vlad, was was Vladimir, wasn't it? On the, I, I like, I love. Well, there's a there's a whole bunch of experiments that are in the emerging science of water book, but... um, and then. You know, one of one of them, um, they were basically they were basically using uh, what was it? I think it was far far infrared spectroscopy um, to look at um, long chains of water molecules that were basically caused by or through homeopathic dilution. So, in, you know, in, in the in homeopathic science, there's always been this you know great well you know great debate. Of like well what, what on earth is really happening when you're diluting a substance and obviously the traditional view is well there's nothing there and it's bullshit i guess um but um what what this what all of it what all this russian research found is that when they were diluting uh different different homeopathic molecules into into water till there were no chemical molecules left um they basically found it created different um basically different physical arrangements. I think it was, it was, they were hundreds of millions of water molecules long as well. Um, and basically yeah, they, 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 they had, um, they had different, they had different structure. Um, what else was really interesting about that? Um, they could only be created in the presence of a weak electromagnetic field, um, which was really interesting for us because 
God, I guess 16, 17 years ago when we were, when we were making the first imprinter, um, or the first imprinter we made was actually a, was a square box. And, um, and we found that the bottles, like any a couple of bottles, it, oh, sorry, I didn't explain what the box did, but anyway, we, we basically put, we put a large um, electromagnetic field right around the, the box and then filled the whole thing up with pharmaceuticals. I and mean, then when we were testing our pharmaceuticals afterwards, the, only the pharmaceuticals around the outside, you know, were close to the wire, actually got um, actually got imprinted, and the ones in the middle didn't. So, um, and, wow. And so it, the, so, it, was nice, so it was nice reading that because it, it just it just confirmed, you know, something we found out just sort of experimentally. But so what we're saying is that the ma the magnet kind of structured the water, which means that it could then get imprinted. And if you don't have the structure yeah, of the water, yeah, if you don't have a weak a weak electromagnetic field, you can't you can't imprint. Um, although you know there is basically a weak electromagnetic field, obviously on the planet ev everywhere. Although of course they do get distorted in cities and rather nasty ways. But that's a whole other conversation which we won't get into today. But that's but people will all I think people should already be able to follow what you just said there, just because they know now that there's normal water and then there's this structured water and it's that structure and so you have to do something well, we've already given away there just explain some of how you imprint an infraceutical with information is you have to first structure it and then you can imprint the information so it the water won't hold the information without it being structured so that's step one we've covered that's cool um, but just expanding what you said the there's a book called the emerging science of water by professors i think it's voikov Vl vladimir and Professor of Faculty of Biology, uh, Konstantin Korotnikov. Korotnikov. He's pretty well known. Korotkov he's, is, he's, he's pretty well known. Yeah, he's yeah. pretty well known, works with people like Limit Taggart. So those guys got together, wrote a book, and they, they kind of, it's a great book. You know, they, they, they go through and summarize quite a lot of the papers, just showing that when you treat water with a magnetic field, it, you know, it, trans, it has an impact on, on the biology of uh, mammals, and it stays long after you've magnetized the water. So it's, it, the, you know, the kind of water contains that information It's because we've structured it. Um, but yeah, so they, those two guys kind of, um, they talk about a lot of the emerging science of water, but they also, being Russian, um, they, they summarized some of, the, um, some of the early researches that have been going on like 100 years ago. People were realizing oh it looks like water has this anomalous property of being able to store information like the early stages of homeopathy cool um how yes. about another how about well what have we got here you've got well your... so the next yeah let's talk about this is really cool Let, let's talk about so so people know emerging science of water if you are interested that's a great book to read but one that's, thing that's not in that book is some of the science around right so so there are researchers using super fast lasers that are going at the speed of femtoseconds to study human biology. And when you get into femto, femtobiology, it's called femtochemistry and femtobiology, and it's Caltech, that, that, that's where the, the lasers were invented. And when you're talking about that, what was once theoretical physics can now be studied empirically because they created the lasers to be able to watch these very very fast reactions and that's the speed that water molecules interact with each other and, and the body <clears throat> and what they're finding is that looking at these at super fast speeds is where they've identified that the shape of a protein for example and this is from a, a paper from the um, proceedings of the national academy of sciences right it was a dr song the department of physics at ohio state university here which is a big so that's a big science paper in 2016 and they said, we, here we show the final shape of a protein depends on two things by, by looking at, this, at super fast speeds, water and the amino acids themselves. We can now say that at ultra fast timescales, the protein surface fluctuations are controlled by water fluctuations. Water molecules work like a big network to drive the movement of proteins. Woohoo! That's like... Let's bring oh. it back to the beginning because it's like... Um... Nine, you know, ninety-nine percent for the. Oh, this just always. I mean, it always struck me. Ninety-nine percent of the body is water. Basically, you know, we're basically the sea of water, and to say the say the DNA and these bits of proteins, they're just floating in the thing. And yet, I mean, this this just flabbergasting, really. Uh, whatever the word is, but um, yeah. you know, big big pharma 
Western medicine is completely focused on, you know, on the 1%, on, you know, genetics and chemicals, etc., that are all suspended in water. <laughs> and it's like, well, yes. Exactly. And, and, and what actually matters is how water's, you know, influencing them, interacting with them. And, you know, and I say, well, you, you just sort of, um, you know, show, showing the proof that it's actually water that's... Um, yeah. yeah, that is, I know, the, it is, it's absolutely, <laughs> it's mind blowing again. No, it, there's, there was a, yeah, there's two other studies worth mentioning. One, it was German researchers from the biophysics division of the Institute of Radiochemistry in Dresden, Germany, where they basically concluded that the precise DNA structure depends on the specific amount of water surrounding the molecule. And then there's, there was the, a recent paper that just came out mainstream science where they said scientists have been wrong for years. DNA is held together by hydrophobic forces. So that's very interesting because yeah, they, they used to think, I think, yeah, they used to think it was hy hydrogen, hydrogen bonds, but yeah, no, it's actually structured water again. Yes. It, it's, it's, it's the bonds that are influenced by structured water, whether the water structured or not. So that's incredible. We're, we're basically now saying that DNA shape, expression and protein shape and therefore function is at super fast timescales controlled by what's happening in the state of the yeah, water. Yeah, maybe we should give it more of a, I don't know, an example, well, an example of, of how, of how, you know, of how healing works. So I'm not going to do it now, but let's say I injure my arm. Ow. <laughs> um, so you know the, so the bot the bot the bot the body basically want, wants to go and repair you know repair that repair that tissue or you know the same happens if, if you if you have a disease or something like that um and so the you know the dna and rna split they basically select out of the library the right you know proteins that they want to make a replication of and so they go oh, i'm going to repair that you know bit of arm so i i need you know the this bit of protein that bit of protein and then it basically go you know it then goes and makes it and repairs it um so what we're basically saying here is the energy is coming likely you know from the energy is coming from the sun the information is already stored in the water that's surrounding the gene and that in that you know so when so when the body injures itself you know what what's happening well in the body basically the water the water is is the mechanism um, the water is basically like a storage mechanism um, of, through how the body through how the body field acts. So you know, people people might be wondering, you know, how does the body field fit in fit in with the water? Well, the, the, the body field is just you know a field that's it, it per, um, permeating. So that's a good word, but it's basically it permeates, per, yep. permeates you know everything. But obviously, especially, especially it's just there in in the water and it's that field of information that's the body field so it's the field of information that's in the water that then if you add in energy from the sun and infrared then actually gets to work and starts nudging you know splitting apart rna and dna and going off and repairing our body you know hence it can basically heal yes and that and what's really interesting about this as well is when water is structured You've got, um, let's see if I can say this name right, there's an, a, a brilliant theoretical physicist, an Italian theoretical physicist called Emilio del uh, Giddes, I think his name is. And he, he's been known, he pi is one of the pioneers of string theory and he's bad actually- was Bad with names as me. Yes. <laughs> he's, uh, he's, it's in the Emerging Science of Water book as well, but he, he particularly looked at the quantum field theory of water. And what he's saying is that when water is structured, it's actually a, uh, he's saying it's a, co it's a basically a huge, what he calls coherence domain. So it's at the quantum level, it's a coherent uh, sort of quantum domain when we have structured water. So we're going to get all the weird and wonderful properties of quantum physics going on, on that level. So we've got like phase changes and the properties of the field. So so the, the field, now we've got water probably interacting with, this is where the body field is interacting with the water or where the water can be affecting the molecules through waves, right? It's like it's, we're, the water is, is dis, uh, sort of talking to cells at the quantum level and changing what they're doing um, by... Well, I, I think, I mean, another way of looking at it is, well, yeah, you're, 
that's a beautiful point actually because it, it is hard for people to think you know this quantum world and this body field world of waves and this and this and you know like the physical i guess the physical body and physical reality and it's like you know it's hard it's hard to connect the two um but water is the medium that basically connects the quantum world the body field world to to the to the physical body um and it's because water is you know well because it's this gel because it's basically struck well because it has structure but it's also gel and quite you know loose loose like like it's 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 subtle enough that you can that molecules can you know be moved and change shape but it's not it's not so fixed like um i guess like a like a protein or a fat molecule or something else you know it's not so fixed that the, a, a quantum effect or a wave can't have an influence so yeah it, it takes something like water and obviously you have to add in more energy to then get it to act a bit more but yeah it, it takes something as subtle and well i say it's that four phase it's because it's not quite a solid it's not quite a liquid and it, it it's that's that's why water is able to do it and it's beautiful Go yes on. there's a whole there's a whole chapter there i can tell you <laughs> well so that's why we have this beautiful quote the quantum coherence of water is really what makes life possible that's dr may oh, wan ko yeah, dr yeah. may wan ko ho our lovely scientist who's who's been researching this year so in summary water can both pri provide direction that's information to biochemical processes that, and that was, that was Sarah's Turner, turner's dream to um interviewer which she did which she did for supercharge but unfortunately we didn't use some footage <laughs> yeah so it's a shame because dr may Wan ho yeah she's <laughs> passed on now hasn't she but uh, she well, got she got it quantum coherence of water is really what makes life well, possible she published the footage we probably should actually yeah, it'd be nice, actually. Maybe you could even find the we footage can, at the can, end of this um, podcast. <laughs> yeah, we can do it on a podcast, yeah. So that is, it really, that expansion of understanding about basically how water can change the, the mechanism of biochemistry through the quantum properties that it has is pretty amazing. And that that's the, the backing. We don't need to, I don't think we'll talk about Jack Benavista again, apart from just saying, okay, yes, he you know he was able to dig, get a, a, a white blood cell to degranulate in response to an antigen that was just a uh, just diluted this the energetic signature had a massive biochemical impact so that was the work of Jack ben Benavista the famous French immunologist who was then like Galileo just completely <laughs> uh, kind of rejected but there, there are so many other and examples so many other suspicious heart attack it's worth saying with Benavista because he's so well known. This is what Professor Pollack says about Benavista's work, Ben Benavista's work, sorry, slightly pronouncing his name wrong. This experiment, which was the neutrophil experiment, has now been repeated by many people and confirmed. So there is no doubt about the authenticity of the results. So it's just get clear about that. that uh, and since then, you've got loads of papers. Uh, the information... Just don't, just don't read Wikipedia because, you know, Wikipedia is... Um... A load of horseshit. <laughs> yes, exactly. The truth, so, the truth is not on Wikipedia. No, we're being we're being that, that, fake, that, that will make fake news. Benefit out to be, you know, a quack. Um, yes, and it's just total fake news. So, um, understand that world experts like Professor Pollack have said that not only is that was it authentic and valid, it's been repeated many times. The, there's so many examples. You can go into mainstream published papers in homeopathy. Um, informational signal of the, just the informational electromagnetic signal of acetylcholine and histamine does things like increases coronary, coronary flow in animal models which is what you'd expect the physical molecules to do but you know there's, there's so many examples it's just it's gone with that it's like that question um that water can can sort of basically yes i mean that's that's what we're now let's moving on to the next thing Let's talk about, we know, so we know now water can change the biology. So now if we imprint water, what about imprinting water with an electromagnetic signal and can that be imprinted onto the water and then change the biology? So Ben Venista basically showed that absolutely yes. It's, should we just mention about Luke Montagnier's work? Have you covered that a lot already? Yeah, well, but probably, yeah, I think we should because who knows what people have listened to. <laughs> yes, I mean, Luke Montagnier, um, famous French immunologist again, interesting, who was the um, winner of the Nobel Prize for one of the yes. winners for HIV, discovering the HIV virus. 
and he basically expanded that work, didn't he? Um, don't know if you want to cover that or I shall. Where he basically I'm was sure, able. Yeah, he. I mean, he basically got a. Um, well, he, he well he he basically wanted to see if he could make a copy of um, copy of a gene without actually using the genetic any genetic material in the next um well i guess in the next bile um so so he took he took a gene he recorded the information and he basically um just surrounded this vial with a uh, with a electromagnetic coil um record recorded the information and then he got another vial and he just added the the chemical material so there was the raw, water, raw materials yeah a c um t and h which are basically the the base okay. pairs of of the gene um, and then he just transferred the digital information electromagnetically in the around the coil that was around the vial and um, and it, it is I, to be honest it blew my mind um, and then basically the gene created itself just from basically the information of the electromagnetic energy um, and the raw material and the gene I may not get this exactly right but i believe it was like 99.5 or 99.8 percent um the same as the original as the original gene um and again you know that that's been that's been repeated a number of times um it made it to a like, oh, i made mean, like it made it to a french documentary um he didn't get any support in the um in the in the west and he's now like the last time well, I, met, I met him god i met him about four years ago and he'd got an offer from china so he's actually he's actually moved to china because china were happy to back his research so he's gone off there still in china and no nope, not for the west because um yeah they, no, they, this, <laughs> this is, they it's the ongoing it. yeah there's just it's it's an ongoing like rejection even though it's the truth and it, all the same it's the truth and it will be it's been repeated this experiment by other people but it's still it is mind-blowing just the I, i'm sort of thinking like so you, you've got these yeah. it is that you've got these little pieces of dna like in the bottom of the tube right they're all broken up and like just the raw materials and then he was able to transmit the the signal of this this uh, dna it was actually it was from an hiv patient i believe and just the signal on the water actually caused those raw broken up materials of dna to reconstruct the physical dna 99 percent close to what i mean that is amazing so yeah, so yeah. What, took... what, was, what was funny to me well it is amazing but was what was struck me about it is like yeah why transfer aids it's like god transfer something that's good for you yeah i well yeah he's you know he's into hiv right in the research but um so uh, here's a russian acad uh, uh, academian alexander uh, Konovalov, and he says today thousands of examples are known obtained in different laboratories of the world and related to all levels of biological organization where it is shown that aqueous solutions of biological active substances are able to display bio effects at different concentrations so it, there's just no question that hope you know that that water can store the electromagnetic signal of many many different substances it's been proven but I think over and over. What's, what's I, you know, just another thought that occurs to me with the mechanism in, like, if we take Montana's experiment and then apply it inside the body, basically, you know, well, that's basically showing in vitro that, um, well, yeah, if you, well, if you imagine that inside the body, you can basically have a field, i.e., the body field or you know, another yes. electromagnetic field, and it can create you know you could create a healing virus or a healing message you can you know alter well basically showing you know how you can create an alter an alter dna and so that yeah what he's doing in the lab here there is you know sort of not quite the same but you know you can see a similar mechanism of how that could be working in the body yeah so just by drinking the information in for soup school you're getting proteins and molecules being reconstructed or restored rebuilt through an infotical we couldn't explain it more clearly and mechanistically than that and it's been proven scientifically in vitro one thing we um, if it's worth it if you think it's worth talking about but if this is true 
we have we have to be honest that the, the overall research on homeopathy in terms of double blind placebo controlled trials in a human setting and when you start looking at large meta-analyses that have been done, there's people like this, Dr. Ted Capture, who's, who's a brilliant, uh, he's an acupuncture therapist as well, actually, but he's the, the, the placebo researcher guy at Harvard. And he's, he's positive about homeopathy. He always sees doing, you know, he always publishes po po positive results. But if you really just do, do it very like meta-analysis of double-blind placebo-controlled trials and so on, you don't see homeopathy coming out as having discernible, convincing effects beyond placebo so should we just address that what are the why if this is true and water has no doubt has memory should we just address why that what are the limitations of standard homeopathy about that probably explains why well, well a quickie is homeopathy is generally in sugar pills not water <laughs> anyway <laughs> <laughs> okay that and it's what they use it's what they're using right what is so yeah, I mean, what? Well, it's, you, well, it's the same as it's the same as all. I don't know, well, you can take you know, met, well, the same the same applies to you know medicine or all over it. But yeah, but the, really, the premier point, I guess, is two two hundred years ago, um, Hahnemann, you know, ha Hahnemann noticed this effect when he was diluting, um, you know, I think it was like Nux vomica, um, you know, would help people's stomachs settle down because it was a dilute thing that would make them vomit if they took a lot of it. Um, but, you know, 200 years later, the problem, the problems that are going on in our health, um, A, they're, di a, they're different. Um, B, there's, you know, God, hundreds of thousands of chemicals in our society, you know, contrary to disease. Um, and C, well, re well, really, it's just this idea that you could have a, it's just so, it's so indirect. It's like, you know, you take, you take, well, you take a dilute amount of some herb or some thing, well, that's not the same. It's not the gene it's not genetic information like Montagna was doing. It's not, you know, it's not the information of how your body can be when it's optimal. So yeah, if you take something that's really, really indirect, you're gonna get, you know, fairly in fairly indirect weak um effects back. So it doesn't mean the effect's not there. It just means, yeah, it's you know, yeah. the effect so is quite small. Yeah. So the, so for example, I mean, even taking a lot of homeopathy, you are actually taking the electromagnetic signal of, or the, the information electromagnetic signal of a toxin, right? Like a bug, which, so it's a sort of vaccine model a little bit where you take the bug. I'm the, sorry, I didn't even say that. Yeah. Yeah. The electromagnetic yeah. signal of like a toxin. That's what, what Harry meant by being indirect. So you, you take the toxin so you're taking that in water, very diluted, hoping that you would create the healing reaction but what if we had the information about perfect dna or a perfect liver function and that's what we're going to talk about in in podcast number two about how you just how do you find out what the perfect information is for example of what's the information for a perfect liver function imprint that on water take that and like luke montagnier was able to reconstruct D dna just from the signal like why use so that's what homeopathy is doing it's using weird substances are probably these days a little bit out of date as well and they're using the, the the frequency of a toxin on the water and a lot of people may be too sick to actually improve them take look at vaccines and what's happening with that like why use a toxin so that's indirect and so there's that perhaps what would be optimal to do is rather than giving another toxin, especially to a chronically ill person, oh, let's throw in another toxin to see if we can boost the immune system. Yes and no, right? You know, it's not going to work for everybody, right? Well, I, me I remember when I, uh, yeah, I think when I was 24, 25, like I took, um, well, anyway, I took homeopathy, I guess four or five years before I ever met Peter and MC schools. But anyway, I only did it once, but I had, uh, I think it was Aurum, you know, they said my constitutional thing was gold, which uh, that remedy was aurum. Um, and I took that. And anyway, uh, I, I remember distinctly feeling like a drop in sort of, I don't know, it's like a, a depressive drop in energy that, I don't know, it lasted for for months. Um, and my own, um, you know, my own thinking of that years later was exactly that. You know, I had, well, obviously I had very severe chronic fatigue syndrome and 
maybe you know obviously it had an effect on me but i just simply like my body battery you know however you want to call it but my energy levels were just so low that they weren't i wasn't in any state that i could muster a proper a proper heat a proper healing response so actually it just lowered me whereas yeah so i think yeah i think if you if you get the constitutional remedy or if you got the remedy bang on right and you had you know i how to describe it but basically if you've got it if you've got enough energy if you've got a little bit more energy than you need you know for your day for your day-to-day functioning and all of that i.e you've got some energy in reserve for a healing reaction yeah it might it probably might do something but yeah i don't, it doesn't i don't think it applies to chronically low energy people it certainly didn't for me yes so that's some of the limitations and it's i was just interesting to what luke montalio said about homeopathy this is what he says is, i can't say that homeopathy is right in everything what i can say now is that the high dilutions are right high dilutions are something are not nothing they are water structures which uh, mimic the original mo- molecules. We find that with DNA. We cannot work at the extremely high dilutions used in homeopathy. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's kind of what Luke Montagnier says. It's, it's interesting to, that people may not realize that it, you can imprint anything. So what about taking some medical drugs, imp- imprint the signal of the medical drug onto water, and what they're at, they are actually doing that and uh, bypass the negative side effects that you would get from taking the physical drug. I'll just, and then you can comment on this, Harry, but here's a just, I'll just reel off a few examples. So researchers from Mexico found that they could take an anti-parasite drug. They imprinted the signature onto that, onto, of that onto water, and they were able to inhibit the growth of two parasites. It was uh, Enteromega histolica and um, Trichinomus virginalis, it's called. And they published that in Experimental Parasitology in 2011. The same researchers found they could, they used an un- antifungal drug, which is interesting, which is amphotericin, which is an interesting antifungal drug, powerful. Um, amphotericin B, it's called. So they imprinted the signal of that on water and they were able to in- inhibit the growth of candida. There's another one done, uh, an antibiotic drug was used, imprinted on water and it prevented the growth of a um, Staphylococcus aureus bacteria. Uh, we've done another one, ampicillin, which is a type of penicillin type antibiotic, imprinted on water, inhibited the growth of E. coli. And one other example um, is um, the and signals of antiviral and uh, immunostimulant drugs were imprinted on water and respectively stimulated or inhibited the immune system in mice models. So that's an interesting thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Was, it, were you, was that the, the aspirin one? Well, I, I, it's the I thought... same. Yeah, the aspirin one, there was another experiment. And I didn't quote that one, but yes, there was, it's also been done on aspirin by similar or maybe the same researchers. Yeah, I quite like it. So there's this, there's this little video on the internet somewhere of um, basically, um, well, they, 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 they basically imprinted aspirin and you can see the blood of the imprinted, uh, the imprinted aspirin blood basically has a lower viscosity viscosity i mean that aspirin is basically a, a blood thinner and yeah anyway you can see it sort of clear as day the you know before imprinted and the after imprinted and that's the blood viscosity yeah, it just suddenly goes all all thin it's, it's pretty amazing pretty so cool. so there's two or three things that we could still talk about um so we'll give let people know that in an, in our part two if it's true that you can get an informational copy of drugs of bugs of whatever what about what's the informational copy? Is it possible to create a copy of the human body? And that is essentially, that's what Peter Fraser did when he decoded the human body field. It's how did he do that? He created, he was able to decode the informational copy of the human body, organs, systems, and we printed that on Ness's infraceuticals. So we bypassed, all, well, don't use bugs, well, let's go for the 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 optimal informational copy of a healthy human body because everybody then goes because we've already said we showed you how you can imprint that on water you create the structured what you have to create the magnetic signal to structure the water and then you can imprint the information how did peter actually decode that that's part two but what would be really interesting maybe just to finish up for today because we're talking more about water uh, on um, this side you're going to test my you're going to test my my memory of the peter years on the next one 
<laughs> well, I'll, I'll write the paper first and then you can read the science paper and the white paper and then we'll talk about that. But let's talk about, um, it's an area, we, can't not, we can't talk about water and not talk about what about the impact of human intention and emotions on water. So here we have human intention and emotions. Um, but again, it turns out that they're not nothing, which is an interesting thing in itself that intention and, and so on isn't nothing. Therefore, we can then imprint that onto water and you know, we can drink in love, we can drink in peace, we can drink in all kinds of things. And that's, by the way, I'll, I'll just go, if it's, if, what's the proof that intention, human intention isn't nothing? I, I love, always love talking about the, um, the research Life. done. <laughs> Pri Princeton Engineering Anomalies Research, the pair research done at Princeton University, where they basically were able to create these things called random ge uh, event generators, which produce a type of white noise, a tiny like roar of surfing electrons. And they provide a mechanism to send out a randomly alternating string of positive and negative pulses, which is demonstrated on a computer screen. And so you press the button and it produces this random pattern of ones and zeros. But when you get a human to intend more ones or more zeros, lo and behold, that those experiments have showed that human intention can impact the, out so it's no longer random. Um, so it was, and it's been repeated in multiple experiments showing that it definitely, human intention uh, can impact these but basically quantum digital processes and information. So they're not nothing. You read how it could do it in the past and the present and the future. Oh, I know. That's even more yeah, freaky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> freaky no, as hell. You can run the experiment. Yeah, you can have the intention. Yeah, so if we're here today and someone ran this experiment six months ago, <laughs> then it works. If we're like, if, yeah, if we're here today and we run the experiment, but we don't look at the results for another six months and six months time we open it, it still works. And it's like, so it's, it's so interesting. It's like you can influence your past and you can influence your future and the present. And I know there's a whole field called, is it matrix re-imprinting or an old friend of ours, Sasha Allenby, but she, she, <laughs> she she's all into, you know, tapping the, you know, you re, you re-imprint um your past and there might be something in it that's pretty good yeah so and your past isn't really the past then it's yeah no it's we're getting into the weird properties of quantum the quantum world outside time and space with that but what's very interesting is you have the scientist that i mentioned who wrote the emerging sciences of, of science of water book konstantin korotkov who work, who's working with lynn mctaggart who's the best-selling author of the field who really talked about he really she her book the field popularized the work and got it out there into the mainstream about these random you know the, the pair research but he is working with her showing that human intention directly changes the structure of water they've been working together for over 10 years now and you've, you of course you've got emoto's wonderful work the entrepreneur japanese entrepreneur it, um emoto is that masura emoto on the crystal showing that when you send love intentions at water you get beautiful crystals and when you send hateful intentions onto water he was looking and he's got his beautiful gallery see so, so again we've got it's a very interesting thing to consider well it's it? sort of yeah i mean yeah um it, in a way it's quite straightforward because thought thought is just thought is information thought is you know thought is part of part of the body field um so yeah i mean if you can imprint information into water and a whole set of yeah, well intent sorry intention is thought you know intention is thought is in, is information they're all sort of similar similar constructs yes and I, one thing i would just add that's just it'll be interesting for people i, I think i've talked to, to you about this but i'm always now i'm clued up about water and i'm always sort of watching learning more about water there's a friend of ours um who is actually he's training with shamans in like the ayahuasca ceremonies like so the plant medicine he's actually directly training with the shamans to guide these ceremonies and if you, you might not be aware that in ayahuasca ceremonies one of the things that people do in those ceremonies they take the plant medicine they play the music and there's often purging purging like vomiting basically going to the loo and that's part of the cleansing process and what's really interesting is that the shaman said there's two, there's three parts of this. There's the actual plant medicine, which kind of opens everything up. 
what gets the cells kind of releasing things is the, the, the sound waves from the music. And we didn't realize the music yeah. is a profound part of the ceremony. But they said the reason there's purging is because the emotional and the negative emotions, thoughts, trauma from the past is stored in the water. And that's why there's purging. So the ancients, there we have the ancients, you know, the shamans from Peru who knew, knew that emotions are stored in water and that you, when, you, when we cry and we have tears, yeah. that, that's really healing. We are actually releasing emotions through the water. So how fascinating is that? I thought I'd just share that. It's great if you could, like, force crying upon yourself, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, you can I... well, force crying, but you can certainly get somebody to connect to their true emotional state and a really an emotional release of tears is that's why crying is incredibly healthy but i think that is also we've covered everything that we were I think, gonna yeah, do I page think, one. I think we're gonna save all the best stuff for part two yes exactly <laughs> so um no, no, it's, it's it's equally as interesting yes and i think um you know i was almost going to say um this i was actually going to use the example of probiotics like this is so that I'm just going to give an example here. There was the Dr. Ron Atlas. This is 1999. Who's the president of the American Society for Microbiology? Just that's just 20 years ago. This is what he said about probiotics. Probiotics may be this today's snake oil, the liquid concoction of dubious or worthless medical value, fraudulently peddled as a cure for innumerable ills. And Dr. Greg, Dr. Gregor Reed, who's a world expert on probiotics, replied and said, well, Ron Atlas showed a level of ignorance about the field that was difficult to believe. By then alone, I had 50 publications on the topics, including clinical data. There are still skeptics and critics, including the American Academy of Microbiology. Uh, but the science is overwhelming. They just need to accept it. That's what's happening with inf the information in water. There's so much research that's going to keep coming through. It'll start getting translated out of Russian into more and more sort of um, English published um, papers. We, um, yeah, and Wikipedia and Google keep... Um, ignore them. It, keep, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really information. I know, I might just say something about that quickly, because I, I don't, we've never really talked about it on our podcast, but in our, um, I guess, in the health, yeah, I guess in the health, um, I guess, opinion leader community, for lack of a better word, but um, basically Go Google have been doing um, a horrible thing over, well, over, over the last two years, They've basically been down. Um, they've changed. They changed all their algorithms about three or four times. Um, but basically now, any big health site um, basically just doesn't. Well, sorry, any big holistic, alternative, um, functional medicine. You know, anything that is non, non big pharma biased um, has basically been bumped off the first page of Google's. And you might have noticed that, like a few a few years ago, you know, you would put in whatever you were looking up and. You get all these different options, you know, including WebMD and Big Pharma, but including McCola and all these other, all, you know, Josh Axe and whoever, whoever. Um, and now, you know, now that's gone. It's only um, Big Pharma world and Wikipedia's in the same um, camp. And, um, you know, it's a bit, it, I, I, the only reason I'm saying it is just, um, yeah, when you Google up a lot of these things, um, the the algorithms discriminate against, unfortunately. But that's the world we live in. So you have yes. to you have yeah, to, it's really to good. Go a bit deeper to, to get to get to the truth. Yeah, listen to the right people, and it's a good point to end on because this Google censorship, like really, they are they're kind of the enemy of the people. They're becoming the enemy of the people of, of true natural health. And yeah, you've got Macola's site. He's if you put in McCola into Google, you'll see like 50 pages of saying he's a quack and all this. He's the biggest health site in the world still, but 99% of the traffic to his website changed in June 2019 this year when Google changed that algorithm. So, and if you start well, doing I mean, that... Yeah, meaning he only gets 1% of the traffic he did um, five months ago. Which is insane. And it's destroying insane. people's businesses. Um, and that you've got to watch, you've got to have discernment because Google is a disinformation, it's become a disinformation uh, network and you, you've got to have good discernment and you've got to go to the right sources. And, you know, if you just, this is what's going to happen with our clients as well. Gonna, I had it just the other day, a client like Googled, it was either Ness or Inpursuticals or, and, and luckily I'd already done a post to my little group saying just let's say you know google changed its algorithms and you're going to see just disinformation propaganda 
against natural solutions. And because I'd already posted that and then someone else just said, oh, look, I just found this. And everybody said, did you see Nikki's post about the, you know, the Google censorship? So, and then they went, oh yeah. So a discernment and trust your own instincts and do your research and do, don't rely on the top things that are coming from, from Google. So I hope people have felt like we've really given them a robust explanation on the science and Give, give them confidence to understand how and why in pursuit schools work. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And obviously you can read Nikki's paper. Um, it's definitely going to, well, I know it's going to be on infosuitschools.com. Um, I believe it will be on energyforlife.com. I'm sure it will as well. We could put it in the show notes if that's acceptable. Put it in the show notes. God, that's far more sensible. Yeah, we'll put it on more than one place. So, yeah. um, so this was really fun, Harry. I really enjoyed doing this interview with you. It was great fun. Yeah, it's great. Thank you very much, Nikki. Brilliant. Take care, guys. Take care. Set. T- take care. See you all again soon. Thanks for listening to the Energy for Life podcast. Now, if you like our show or you want to try out Bioenergetics for yourself, check out our website, energyforlife.com. Or if you're a practitioner who wants to try out the system on a trial in your clinic, go to neshealth.com. Looking forward to joining us on iTunes or Spotify. If you enjoyed the show, please take the time to rate, review, and of course, share. Thank you and see you again soon.